it's interesting that he grew up on his parents' farm. They owned their own land. His father and mother did. That, is, that in itself was unusual. And they can owned... I make, can I interject a yes. point? Uh, I'm sorry. This is very rude of me. But I have to tell you that people who study these things now are saying that the African Americans who are immensely successful in today's society, as for example, Oprah Winfrey, mm -hmm. tend to have had great great grandparents who had their own their own property down south. There's something about that. Yes. But anyway, I interrupted. Either owned their own property or worked for a railroad and were members of the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters and then therefore had their checks come from someone outside yeah. the local community. Yeah. But it gave them a, a, a sense of financial or independence to a, a large extent. They could own their own home. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that tells you a lot about the kind of people that Meredith's family, Mer Meredith's parents were. Uh, resilient and strong, disciplined, independent, hardworking. That's the, the culture he grew up in. Right. And that's the kind of person he became. Uh, they made sure their children went to, went to school, and a number of their children, including Meredith, they sent off to Florida for their last year in high school to, get, to get, make sure they got a good last year of good education in high school. So he comes from uh, really an unusual personal background. One other little thing that uh, is an indication of his, the kind of parents he had, his father, Moses Meredith, registered to vote in 1919, 1919, 46 years before the Voting Rights Act, he had the courage and the initiative to go to the courthouse in Kosciuszko and withstand Jim Crow, stand up to him, yeah, yeah. and register to vote. He's probably lucky he wasn't lynched, actually. Well, who knows? But yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, then he then Meredith served in the Air Force after high school. Yeah. Served in the Air Force for eight years, and. I think that was a time in which he really grew up a lot. He, as I, I think I said earlier, he went to uh, school in the Air Force, a lot of, a lot of training programs. He took a lot of extension courses from colleges, uh, correspondence, college, correspondence courses, and uh, just became a much, uh, well, he got older by eight years, but mature and a uh, much more thoughtful person. Why, why did he get the idea? which, uh, you know, w w one could unkindly say is megalomaniacal, but on the other hand is what motivates almost all successful people, that it is his to bring, uh, to, uh, it is his function in the world, his destiny, to help his people get out from under the system of white domination. Well, I think he, he was brought up to think that he should be treated equally. And uh, he could see no reason not to be. And in the Air Force, in many ways, he was treated equally. And then in Japan, where he was stationed for several years, he realized that he was not treated like a, a black person there. He was, he was treated as a human being, as an American. He, he began to see what race was not like by living in Japan. Yeah. And at the same time, he was watching the civil rights movement emerge in the United States. He was watching from a distance. And one other, two other things that I, I perhaps should mention, they're in the book. Uh, at one of his review sessions in the, in the military, when he was being reviewed by his superiors and, and ranked and rated by his, for his performance, one of the officers urged him when he went back to Mississippi to change things, a white officer. And so, you know, he begins to realize this, this, this is something that had to be done. Yeah. He, uh, he was a very conservative individual, actually. He was not like the, uh, a what you might call the norm of the African-American civil rights writer of the time. No, he wasn't. He was, uh, from, the, from the beginning, uh, uh, financially very responsible, very frugal, saving money, investing, investing in land in Itala County when he was in the service, supporting his parents. Uh, he really did believe in his own responsibility for his own success. And the, the whole idea of bootstraps, he yeah. believed in that. Yeah. Uh, a Booker T. Washington uh, type of mentality. Yes. Uh, when he com com combined with the belief that he was supposed to be in an elite yes. and supposed to be educated. And he was, he was in Du Bois's Talented Tenth at the same time that he was 
pulling himself up through self-improvement right. the way Washington right. did. Right. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.